Hey guys, today we are fixing a solar inverter thing. We have only got this board and this board and one is working. The one with no dot and the one with a dot is not working. And basically the customer has three of these systems and he took one of the systems out and changed these boards over and yeah, this board is faulty. This one we have to fix. I don't really know how this works. We will just use common sense to fix this board. I think we should first get some under the microscope and inspect the defective one. So there is honestly not much on this board. This looks like two optocouplers, couplers, but I might be wrong. We will figure that out later. Diode down here to capacitors to resistors. And on the other side we have a header top and bottom. And then again what looks like two optocouplers. couplers. This is some IC, we will look it up later. And at the bottom we have two more ICs. First thing I do is normally test the sports, but I can't test these because I have no solar inverter here. But what we can do is the next step, look for shorts, because that can easily save you a lot of time diagnosing and just points you to a shorted power ray. I will now go over every single ceramic capacitor and check if any of them are reading low resistance, because on these sports you don't have some APU low resistance or something. They must all read like kilo ohms. I've got my multimeter in resistance mode and we will now measure the capacitors. Start with the one in the top corner here. See what kind of resistance we get. 14 mega ohms. That one is not shorted. Let's go down here. 4.7 mega ohms. That is okay. Let's go to the other side now. We've got a capacitor down here in the corner. 15 mega ohms. That's okay. And we've got one last capacitor right here. And this is reading 1.2 ohms, yeah? So in a RF circuit or behind the APU or something, that would be fine because it's normal that we have low resistance there. But um, on this one, it shouldn't be. We, I've got another board here, as I said, a working one. And we will measure this capacitor on this one for short. And here we got 4.1 kilo ohm, yeah? That's way more healthy. Let's put this one away again. So we've got short on this capacitor. There is several ways we can approach this now. We could either inject voltage and look with the thermal camera onto this, or we can first try to understand the circuit and maybe check out which chips are actually on this line. So what could be faulty? Maybe it's just this capacitor on this line, which is unlikely or impossible. Um, then we could just replace that, yeah? So one other thing we want to check is if this uh, diode is maybe short because this diode could be a protection diode and it might be uh, for over voltage protection and then go short. But no, it's 12 kilo ohm, it's not the problem. I would now next want to identify these strips because um, if we know what these strips are, maybe we can verify the pinout and check if they are on the short rail. And for this I will just put it tiny tiny amount of thermal paste on them and rub it. With a bit of thermal paste on here we can now identify the markings. So let's start with the one on the right. It's 78L05A. And taking a look on the data sheet, this is a positive voltage regulator and we have a pinout of the chip here. We should check V in for a short, V out for a short, and the others are ground no connect, so this is not complicated. Going back to the microscope now, we identify pin 1. Pin 1 is here. And we also now ground, because it's like pretty much this to this one, this one, this one, all ground. So we can measure output voltage for short. And that is shorted, yeah? So on our output we have a short. And on the input, on the input we don't have a short. So normally these ICs don't fail short on the output. So I would usually assume that something on the output is dead and not the IC itself. Normally when they fail, they fail on the input and output or just on the input, not on the output. So let's look at the next IC, what we have here. And I have actually found the chip, it's a ISL8487, which is this RS485 chip, the guy 
who brought me this uh, was talking about. So let's check the uh, pinout. We know VCC and ground zone now. So let's switch back. And if we have a short on VCC, that uh, IC might have actually failed. So let's check. We can verify that the ground is on this pin by measuring. Yeah, that's the ground and ch check the VCC pin. Yeah, so this chip could be our problem. It could have been shorted. Um, what else do we have here? Are these optocouplers collect connected to our ground? Yes, and the other side. Oh, that is one kilo ohm. So that is can't be our problem. The optocoupler is fine. And let's check this optocoupler. One side is ground and the other one. That's also one kilo ohm. So that can also not be our problem. It's not shorting out. So I think this chip is dead, yeah? ISL8487. So this I see is a 84JN28K. Let me find a data sheet. It is uh, hex inverters with Schmidt trigger inputs. Um, we don't really need to know the technical aspects. We just need to know pin 14 is VCC and pin 7 is ground. Let's measure the chip. Is the chip fine or not? Let's measure this I see here. Pin 14 and pin 7. And we have 4.5 million ohms. So this I see is also fine. So my best bet is that this 8487 IC is faulty. Let's remove this IC and check if this short goes away. I have placed a razor blade there so we don't melt the connector. And now we can start soldering. I will first put some flux on the board. And then I will come in with my soldering iron and some solder and really flood the chips legs with solder yeah now i will go over to the other side now and carefully do the same here too enough solder has been added to both sides so we will now just heat here heat here And we should also clean up perfect before we care about the chip too much let's go right back to measuring resistance we have had a short between here and here before and now we have got 150 ohm so 150 ohm is already better it's not a zero ohm short anymore but it's still low. So I don't think this is a good resistance for power rail. But that also proves that this I see that we just removed is definitely faulty. So this board still has an additional problem. Not only the ESL8487 is dead, but apparently also maybe the regulator. Maybe the regulator failed because the chip had failed. Let's remove the regulator and recheck for partial short. First add flux. Then add solder. I won't use the blade method anymore, it was annoying. Nice, there it is. I replace it to the side in case it's not faulty. Clean up the pads. Yeah, looking good. Again, we had a short between here and here. Right there and right there. Let's see now. And now it looks like there's nothing, yeah? Yeah. So we no longer have a short from V out to ground. Or we can check the other side too. The capacitor was shorted, remember? And let's measure. This capacitor is also no longer shorted. So we've cleared the shorts. Both ICs are dead. And I will check if I have a replacement and otherwise order new ones. Hey, it's a couple of days later and I have finally received parts here. So um, we will solder these in now. 
we had unsoldered these two ICs and we will replace them with new ones now. Okay, we will start as always with a bit of flux. Just get one out, thank you. And pin it in place using one leg. Like this. Perfect. Again, sound on this side on one pin. Yeah, what do you think? Good soldering. I will now measure across the board if we have any shorts left, because we had a short on the capacitor on the back here somewhere. And if we don't, we will give it back to the customer and test. Okay, I looked up in my own video and we had a short between ground, which is these two pins in the middle, these two pins in the middle. These are all ground, so we can place our probe here and check here. And we had no short before there, that's good. But on the output pin, it's the bottom left here, there we had a short. Now we have 6.1 kilo ohm, which is perfect. It's a good value. This chip was also shorted. Yeah, this one on the side. And we found that the ground pin is on this pin, which is still true, good soldered. And we had a short on the VCC. 6.1 kilo ohm, no more short. Absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm happy that we managed to fix this and I will only upload the video if the customer said the board is working. So we will know the answer now, if the board is working or not. And thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you liked the video, and see you in the next one. Bye.